So I hope your heart is ready right now. Whatever you're doing, just begin to focus on the Lord. Drop whatever you're doing right now and tune into the voice of the Spirit. Hey, hey, um, la, da, da. You're so good to me, God. Can you begin to thank Him everywhere? Come on, begin to thank Him. What a good, good Father He is. He says, every good and perfect gift comes from your Father. The Father of heavenly lights in whom there is no changing like the shifting of sands. That's your Father. He never changes. He never slumbers. He never sleeps. Oh God, we worship you. Oh, begin to lift up your voice and praise Him. He is worthy. Hallelujah. If you are here, shout Amen in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like but I've heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father to you are it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Oh, and I've seen many searching for answers far and wide. But I know we're all searching for answers Only you provide Cause you know just what we need Before we say a word You're a good, good father To you are, to you are are, and I am loved by you. So I am. So I am. So I am. Cause you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. Come on, say that to him. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways, oh God. You are perfect in all of your ways. Do are. You're a good, good Father. Do you are. To you are, and I am loved by you. To I am, to I am, to I am. Can you sing that again? Cause you are perfect in all of my ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of ways to are you are perfect in all of your ways God you are perfect in all of your ways you are perfect in all of your ways to Love so undeniable. 
unbelievable I, I can hardly speak Peace so unexplainable I, I can hardly think and they know me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still as you call me Deeper still into love Love, you're a good, good father To you are, to you are, to you are And I'm loved by you To you are, to you are, to you are You're a good, good father To you are to you are, to you are, and I'm loved by you. To I am, to I am, to I am. You're a good, good father. To you are, to you are, to you are, and I am loved by you. It's who I am in you, it's who I am in you, Lord. Oh, it's who I am in you. You're perfect in all of your ways. You're perfect in all of your ways. To you're a good, good father. You're a good, good father You're a good, good father You're a good, good father Just love him right now singing over you he's singing over you he's singing over you he's singing over you yes God I'm coming home to you Yeah, you 
you say that I'm your friend You are my desire Tell him nothing else will do Nothing else will do I lay it all down again To hear you say to hear you say that I'm your friend Help me find a way Bring me back to you Lord, bring me back to you You're all I want Sing it out you're all I've ever needed You're all I want Help me know you are near Cause you're all I want You're all I've ever needed You're all I want Help me know you are near Help me know you are near He's near to you Draw close, draw close to him. Help me know you are here. Draw near to him, he's near to you, Holy Spirit. You're the lover of my soul. I give you full control. Draw me near to you Draw my heart near to you, God You are all I desire Captivate my heart once again Revive us, Lord Revive us, Lord Open the eyes of my heart I want High, high and lifted up. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you high and lifted up. So high and lifted up. So high and lifted up. Oh. Yes, Lord, you've been so good to us, Father. You've been so good to us. You've been so good to us Yes, God, you've been so good Poured out in sack. 
sacrifice to trade this sinner's hand for your new covenant. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your promise I won't forget I'll walk salvation's road With fear and trembling Your way bone as my own As Christ is formed in me Hallelujah, I live my life in remembrance, hallelujah, your promise I won't If ever I should lose my way, if ever I deny your grace, remind me of the price you pay. Hallelujah, I live in remembrance. I live in remembrance, oh God. Oh, I live in remembrance of all that you've done for me, your thoughts towards me, God. Can you sing this with me? And you've been so, so good to me. And you've been so, so good to me. Oh, to think. If not for you, sing it out. And you've been so, so good to me, oh God, you have. And you've been so, so good to me. Oh, to think where I will be if not for you, if not. Come on, everybody remember, you've been so, so good to me. You've been so, so good to me. Oh, to think where I will be, if not for you, if not. As far as heights reach from the depths, as far as east is from the west, so far your grace has carried me. Until I see you face to face, until I've last I've won my race, remind me you're not finished yet. kingdom you call me your own adopted me bless me in the highest place forever 
You sung over me, O oh God, when people looked down on me and misunderstood me. You lifted me up, O oh God. You've been so, so good to me. And you've been so, so good to me. Oh, to think well. Without you, if not for you, as far as heights reach from the depths, as far as east is from the west, so far your grace has carried me until I see you face to face. Until fast I fly. Remind me you're not finished yet Alleluia 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 Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Wow. How many of you have been enjoying the series, the Ruth series? I'm telling you, there's so much in this one little book. And uh, it's just been such a blessing to me as well. We know that in this time that God has given us, there's a special grace that is coming on the people who are connected. And the word is bringing that grace. And if you have been paying attention to the details, to the instructions that have been coming, I am telling you, this book is calling you back into the place. It's, it's, it's speaking to so many people. So if there's somebody who is far off, who's moved out of the, you know, the house of bread, God is giving you an invitation to come back. If it is you already have been in the house of bread and not been serving and not understanding the things that have been given to you, you are able to now see the blessings, the, the, the privilege and the, the glory that God has placed you in. And I pray God, you're, you're, through this teaching, you are able to understand how strategically God has placed you to receive. You're learning about lessons of sonship, through a daughter. In the last Sunday, we learned about that. And I pray that blessed your heart. Uh, today is going to be a day like we've never had. So I want you to just close your eyes. When I began to read this word, it brought great, great, great insight into my own life and I was just worshipping the Lord and I was so grateful and I pray God by the end of this teaching you will be so grateful to what God has done in your life that you will see the things you've never been able to see so let us pray let's take time and welcome the Holy Spirit he's the one who opens eyes to everything we thank our sweet Heavenly Father our daddy and we thank Jesus, our great high priest, our brother. Oh, what a lover he is. Hallelujah. Yes, 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 yes. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you that today's teaching will open our eyes, Lord. It will bring us to a place where we will fully understand your amazing call on our lives, Lord. Father, I give you glory that today every stronghold, every burden, every confusion will be lifted by the preaching and teaching of your holy word. Lord, the things that have been hidden will be revealed to your children, that ears and eyes will be opened and hearts, Lord, that you'll give us hearts of understanding 
that we may know the length, the breadth, the depth, and the height of your great love for us. I submit myself to you, Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, take control of this time and let your children receive from you. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Hallelujah. Okay, let's, now that you're ready, we shall go quickly into the word and we've got a lot to cover. So I pray you've got your notebooks, your pens, and we're going to go. Amen. So we uh, studied last time and uh, we were in chapter 2 and we looked at how, you know, Ruth and Naomi reach Bethlehem. And now Ruth begins to basically say, I'll go and glean the fields and make sure we get some income. And uh, in chapter 2, verse 3, she leaves. She happens to be in the field of Boaz. And that's such a beautiful thing, how God plans our lives. You know, we saw Ruth, what great sacrifices she made. We saw her commitment, her diligence. Uh, you know, not only just her saying things, but she actually followed up. And now we see after all that, now she goes about to work and she lands in the right field. And this is exactly how God works. You should see this. This is amazing. You know, God just doesn't work randomly. If things happen to you, you know, which you don't deserve, <laughs> you know, something when I say that you don't deserve means you've not reached to that point of understanding what you're getting into. You know, you see it many times in the corporate world, people who don't deserve a promotion, they get promoted and then what do they do? They make everybody's life under them bitter and you know, there's no happiness. Why? Because they don't know what they moved into. So our God doesn't work like that. Our God works to make sure that you understand what you're entering in so that the grace that comes on you, you do not miss it and make it a disgrace. Amen. So. The way our God works is He makes sure He prepares you for promotion. Even if you're looking for marriage, He'll prepare you for marriage. And you're going to see that how Ruth was, how God was preparing Ruth to meet her Boaz. I pray God, if you're asking God for a partner, don't just run and get any partner, okay? There are many fish you can just go to the market and get, but there are some fish that are sent, amen? And you need that. Just like Ruth, she went and she was doing her work. She was not searching for a partner. She was being faithful to the promise, to the covenant that she had with her spiritual mother. She was working the field, working her life, being a support, gave up her dreams, said, listen, I know you bought me to the house of bread and I know that being here, I will get all my needs complete. And she was just serving, just serving. And while she was serving, serving it happened. And when you, you know that word I explained to you in, in Ruth chapter 2 verse 3 and she happened to come to the part of the field that was Boaz and then you see how it happened that Boaz came from Bethlehem so in all our happening we must understand that our great God is the great HR partner amen he's the guy who brings everything together so here we see how uh, receive that for whoever is thinking about marriage more than getting the partner ask God prepare me prepare me prepare me so that when you get into the covenant of marriage you have understood the grace that has been released and now your marriage can be blessed with that grace and you don't uh, you know misuse that grace and not understand the position that God is giving you amen so now we see uh, Boaz comes on the scene and now we move to chapter 2 verse 8 and uh, the reapers give uh, him uh, update on who he who this girl is and remember we talked about Boaz being a, a spiritual reflection of Jesus and uh, why he is of great wealth uh, he has compassion to the stranger he provides and he also provides protection so that's exactly which what we see in this chapter about Boaz and he's a kingsman redeemer just like our Lord Jesus in the spiritual understanding of that. So while we talk about this, I want you to always keep the spiritual aspect of this ever in your mind, okay? So while we, we get into the details of the story, remember it's reflecting a spiritual reality. So Boaz is nothing 
else but the kingsman redeemer jesus and we know that ruth is reflecting the church amen so now you see in verse 8 then boaz said to ruth you will listen my daughter will you not so he's telling her now that she has come this long journey boaz identifies her he's he's come in her, she's come in his field and he says listen my daughter do not go to another field so he gives her instructions and then i spoke to you about the power of instructions there are so many people who don't want instructions they rather want you to give you the answer they want you to put their hand and pray and get an instant miracle but they don't want instructions but i want to tell you this god we serve is all about instructions so if you are a person who doesn't like instructions you're going to find it very difficult you will have to literally be living from minister to minister that means if you're sick you will have to stay sick till you find somebody who got a gift of healing and then stand in a line and then you know you will have to go through a lot of problems because that minister will probably not be even you know there to lay hands but if you can follow instructions you can get healing similarly if you can follow instructions you can get out of debt because our god is a god of instructions and you see boaz he's giving his daughter instruction he's saying listen now he understands what is happening in that whole field okay so he tells her listen don't go in another field now that you're come here you're coming close to something that you're going to receive very soon and he says so don't go anywhere then he says i'm reading from verse 8 do not go to glean in another field nor go from here stay close to my young women very important young women and we talked about it titus 2 where the older women should be teaching the younger women then it says keep your eyes on the field which they reap and go after them have i not commanded the young men not to touch you and then he says when you're thirsty drink from what the young men have drawn so he gives a protection he gives her food he gives her water and he tells her don't go anywhere i'm giving you i'm giving you instructions keep your eyes on these women because as they reap you will begin to reap and remember naomi is a spiritual mother okay it represents a spiritual covering that has god has sent into your life to give you things by just observing by learning by following instructions you will receive things that you did not earn that you did not work for and you will get understanding that will prepare you for the coming of you know future problems in your life you'll have the answer so then you'll know what to do what is right you will not be like a cain who resorts to doing crazy things when things are not accepted but you'll understand how if things are not working in your life you will be able to put the right offering the right uh, you know the right uh, offering like you know Cain did he knew what was right but he still didn't do it he ended up taking the easy way out you will know how to fix it and move into the grace of god okay so here yeah, let your eyes be on the field so he gives the instructions and now you look at Ruth's response she falls on her face to the ground and says why have i found favor in your eyes since you should take notice of me since i am a foreigner we talked about boaz being a reflection of our of jesus in the spiritual and this really is our response to salvation you know god looks at us we are outside this covenant we are foreigners we are moabites we are ammonites we are gershonites we are hittites we are we are supposed to be killed and destroyed why because we don't know how to even approach this god but here's this god who looks at us and says i have seen how you have sacrificed i've seen how you have walked i have seen your pain i've seen your tears i've seen what you've let go to come into the place where you are and so now i give you instructions and this is really ruth's response she's saying you know such a beautiful response even though no matter what we have done can i tell you no matter what sacrifice you made it doesn't compare to the sacrifice that has been completed for you and i our sacrifice is nothing it's nothing oh i've done this for god i've done that for god i've not got anything nothing you have no idea of the sacrifice that has been done amen and you're going to receive revelation today in Jesus mighty name and then we saw boaz answering 
Everything you've done, Ruth, I have taken note of. This is so important. You know, verse 11. And he gives her, Boaz gives Ruth a full account of all the sacrifices she's done. And this is what, what I told you last time. Every little thing you've done for God has been written down. It does not go. What you've done to the least of his brethren, you know, giving a glass of water, helping somebody on the street, helping your mother do the chores, helping your father, helping your brother, helping those people who are not so lovable, you know, while keeping all the instructions of God in mind, showing grace, you know, persevering in the things of God, while the enemy is attacking you, not giving up. God has seen all that. You know, it's not that God has not seen it and your reward is coming. This life is about sowing. And as we keep sowing, harvest will come. So don't get worried when you keep sowing and thinking, oh my God, when is it going to happen? No, 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 no. God never told you to sow and then think, okay, keep a book and say, okay, now I gave so much, now I should get this much. No. You see at just the right time, the Bible says in Romans 5, at just the right time, I think it's Romans 5, 5. When we were sinners, Christ died for us. God demonstrated his love in this, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. But it was just at the right time. Just at the right time. Not in our time, not in your understanding. Perfectly in God's time, who is out of time, knows the best time to give you things in his time. Hallelujah. A lot of time over there. I hope you got that. So don't worry. Don't worry. Just make sure this life is about sowing. You know, Galatians 6, 7, I think, says that uh, we must continually sow. Sow in the spirit that we may reap eternal life. Because if we sow in the flesh, from that flesh, we will receive death. Because the flesh doesn't have anything to offer. When we sow in the flesh, from that very sowing, we will receive. But if we sow in the spirit, you will receive eternal life. Now, verse 12, Boaz tells her, The Lord repay your work for a full reward. He blesses her. Okay, I'm not going there. Okay, then we talked about three things. I hope you got it. Uh, immediately in verse 14, Boaz says, Come here. And he then invites her into communion where he gives her bread. He dips a piece of bread in wine. And uh, so you can see a lot of love happening over here, okay, between Boaz and Ruth. So he puts her near the reapers and uh, she ate. The Bible says she ate and was satisfied in verse 14 and she kept some back. It's such a beautiful thing, you know. Uh, when the children, they eat, you know, the Bible tells you uh, uh, in Galatians again, I think, it tells you that whatsoever you learn, make sure you share it with your teacher. And so here, yeah, she's eating, she's satisfied, but she's keeping something back. For whom? For Naomi. And when she rose up to glean, Boaz commanded his young men saying, now this was amazing, okay, what I shared last time. We still not come with today's revelation, but it's just so important to give you some background before we go in. Otherwise, we'll not connect the dots. So he says in verse 15, let her glean even among the sheaves and do not reproach her. So now he's telling the angels. And remember, I told you the reapers are nobody but angels. So he's saying, listen, sweet angels, make sure you are, <laughs> you know, make sure she's gleaning even among the sheaves. If you understand Israeli law, Israeli law said, leave the corners of the field for the Gentile, for the foreigners. Now what he's telling her, telling his angels is let this Gentile come into even gleaning among sheaves. Now this is telling you, not the corners, come where the actual reaping is going. So where it is in the field, no longer in the corn. He's saying now get the root, allow her to come even where you are reaping among the sheaves. And do not say anything, okay? It's against, it's against the practice, but let her come. Let her come. You see grace. And let grain from the bundles fall purposely for her. You see, you may be wondering all the sacrifice, what it's going to do. There's coming a time when purposely 
things are going to unfold in your life and you will be sitting and thinking my god thank god i waited thank god i i was humble enough not to be proud enough to take something out of force but i waited thank god i listened to my father's instruction thank god i did not do that hasty thing thank god i didn't listen to that to that to that to the voice that the enemy sent to take me out of the house of bread that God planted me thank god i fought that why because now when you pass the test purposely things are left for you can you shout amen <laughs> purposely things are begin to be left for you the reapers are commanded what are the reapers commanded make sure she comes into the gleaning where the sheaves are now kept okay before you were just sitting out and taking crumbs from the end hallelujah it's like that lady syrophenician she says even the dogs you know have the crumbs and you are thinking what kind of ruthless jesus is this he saying it's not fit to throw the to the bread to the dogs and she gets up and makes an answer like my god my god my no offense remember jesus all his words were triggered to see your heart so one word that comes out from your father or from your mother it comes out to you to see it tests your mature and then you can see offense when you don't get what you want when you don't get the right answer it reveals your heart through the response that comes out and here the syrophenician woman gets up and says listen even the dogs eat the crumbs from their master's table immediately the lord says my god this answer uh, it it provokes a response and so he says listen go your your daughter is healed and here he says listen now because you because of ruth's answer why should you show me such grace now that i have understood grace so it revealed her heart she didn't say oh my god i did so much work finally some pay off is happening so long i took care of my aged mother or my father and now i'm finally getting rewarded i am sure i should have got this reward long time ago no that's an answer of a proud heart the response is why this was my duty and if i get something praise god if i don't get something i'm yet going to praise god hallelujah because i'm already so blessed just by walking just by walking just by walking in this house with god has planted me in with the things he's given me with the understanding and the voice that he sent me even if i don't get the best position i'm going to continue to serve with the greatest excellence whether people understand me whether people know me i'm not going to be like the second brother who continued to stay in the house but yet had a grudge against the first brother no i'm going to have a heart where i can continue to serve and even the brothers who have gone if they come back and get a better position than me i will still stay rooted and planted because i never served to get i served because i was a son i pray god you're listening i pray god you're listening this is how we need to serve god this is how we need to serve god i'm telling you god gives us good things but we should never take our eyes off and start looking at those good things we should always keep our eyes on jesus He is the author and perfecter. He is the one who gives us everything. Now I was telling one of my some of my children I was t- talking to and I was telling them I said as long as you look at the Lord and walk with the Lord and follow closely the Lord your father's voice will get more and more amplified to you. You will begin to see things that you've never seen. But the minute you start looking to your father to bless you, I can guarantee you God will take your father away from you because we serve a jealous god the this is what most sons and daughters don't understand they think by keeping their eyes on their father and mother and trying to receive from them they will receive more but there comes the disappointment there comes the problem the problem is that as you love jesus more and more you will actually begin to see your the voice that god sent you the man of god that sent you he and jesus now becoming one you see it's a beautiful thing if you don't get what i'm just telling you okay this is a deep revelation i'm just giving it to you for those who have years because i'm not going to explain it 
So you must understand if there's a reason you are not receiving it's because you've not fine tuned yourself because you're looking to get promoted to get blessed by your father so you've not understood who he is in the spirit but the more you begin to follow Jesus the more you begin to love Jesus there is no way you'll miss your father's voice let me leave it over there let's move on we've got a lot to cover hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus thank you jesus okay so then we saw yeah how he said purposely throw for her grain purposely now leave it that she may glean and do not rebuke her so he's telling the angel listen make sure she comes into places she could not have access into now let her come where you when you are reaping okay and then he says listen make sure you drop things for her bless her sudden blessings sudden promotions give it to her hallelujah and so you can just imagine ruth she was like hey i got a bundle of grain guys you left it you forgot about this and those guys are laughing and saying we threw <laughs> we threw it purposely for her. but she's thinking we you know we missed it because that's how they were instructed the instruction was don't make it plain to her let's continue to give her to test her heart this is so important you need to understand if the heart is not right at this time you know what will happen you'll take that bunch of blessings and run with it and think wow this is it i earned it i got it praise god i got that partner and then you make the partner god you make the job god this was still a test this whole book of ruth is a test it's a test to reveal your heart at different stages you look at what ruth does she takes the she takes the sheaves and she runs back to her mother in law okay now i told you one instruction for all you young girls so ruth goes in verse 21 and she tells her mother i'm calling naomi she says you stay uh, He also said to me you shall stay close to my young men and we talked about it that was not the instruction the instruction was stay with the young men women but she went and said that and that is so common you know when the blessing begins to come the voice of the lord you begin to not pay diligence and this is so important i'm telling you again when the blessing comes as long as you were broke you didn't have anything to be excited about and you were growing and hungering for Jesus you heard well you listened well you wrote well you understood well now that the abundance a little abundance has come you take a message and you begin to interpret it as per your heart that's why you need to make sure your desires of your heart are always fixed on Jesus he says what uh in psalms 37:4 delight yourself in the lord and he will grant you the desires of your heart meaning what when you delight in god the desires of your heart are met because the delighting in the lord changes the desires of your heart and now they can be met but a person who's crying out to god and saying meet my desires before delighting is in big trouble because the first sheaf that falls you're going to run with it and now you'll fail the test and you can see ruth here she's almost going to fail the test guys remember i told you three altars are being reflected here so when she came from the house from her mobite by obedience she connected to naomi the obedience of altar was there and then she got into communion which we saw with boaz the minute the altar of communion was established where he gave her you know spiritually okay spiritual significance where he gives her the bread and he dips the wine the minute after that miracles you see the reapers are told to do certain things they are told to give you certain things and this is where pride can come in and you can see already now she's not hearing the way she heard first before it was humility crying you I'm a foreigner why do I deserve this I don't this is exactly how we come into the kingdom we are so excited about what god did for us but then 10 years 15 10 years down 15 years down now we are sitting and saying god give me this i am not happy anymore until i get this what happened to all that 
when you had nothing and you were shouting and screaming his praises now you come in and salvation is not good enough the holy spirit being with you is not good enough you being seated in places is not good enough you being protected kept in continual health is not good enough now you want something more i pray that you will never be like that amen i pray you will pass the test in jesus mighty name and the people said amen so you look here in verse 21 of chapter 2 stay close to my young men she says and then immediately in verse 22 naomi says ruth ruth and here comes the spiritual mother this is what i told you right without even being part of a conversation she knows what has happened she knows exactly what a boaz would have told her and she knows ruth still ruth has not yet understood it that 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 beautiful syndrome of just gleaning with young men <laughs> you know meeting with them running with them you know being with them is still there deep in her heart and so naomi gently says it is good my daughter that you go out with his young women and that people do not meet you in any other field that was such an instruction because ruth had no clue she saw a few men looking at her young women and she thought she knew everything but she what naomi knew was this lady is still an outsider and somebody smiling may not have the right intent i pray god that the people who have been sent to you you will have a discerning heart to know which one have been sent into your life by god and that you will not just be dancing around you know the wrong people because remember the wrong people at the wrong time can be sent and you need to be discerning that's why you need a spiritual mother you need a voice over you that can come and cleanse you with the word of god so that you can always walk in the way of god so naomi tells her listen it's it's good that you walk with the young women and this is so beautiful it tells you immediately naomi didn't get up and says you know what you don't understand all the young all the women are so old they can't you know there's a generation gap she didn't get up and say all that she just verse 23 so she stayed close by the young women of boaz to glean until the end of the barley har- harvest again you see more the promise comes but you still have to complete so she kept gleaning and she dwelt with her mother in law now in chapter 3 verse 1 naomi gets up and lists, she says she's passed the test that means i gave the instruction she completed it she's passed the test so now she gets up and says listen Shall I not seek security for you my child that everything may be well Basically she was saying shall I not seek for you a husband now I will give you information that you could never ever get and please note it's after two chapters of walking with Naomi that it came many people come to the house and they want full attention full understanding all the mantle they want in one It doesn't come there's some mantles which come only through service yes we can pray and bless you we can do but there are some mantles and i already explained it that there are some mantles that only pass on by pouring of water just as elisha poured water on the hands of elijah just as the disciples stayed with jesus only those disciples ended up doing shaking the earth other 70 they preached and god knows where they went amen they were all anointed we also saw how god took the spirit of moses and anointed another 70 people in the book of numbers and do you know he took the spirit of moses and put it on them do you know that all those guys had the power to open red seas bring manna from heaven rain down plagues break open rocks they all had that anointing when it came from moses but do you know they prophesied once and that was the end of it that was the end you know why because besides M- moses there was a joshua and not only the man and the reason joshua became moses's uh, you know successor is not because he just got a mantle you read everywhere where moses was he was he used to be waiting outside the tent waiting serving walk king waiting serving walking waiting serving walking till finally moses says you know god gets up and says listen 
put your mantle on him now bless him because i'm going to make him a man after you and so we see that these you can have an anointing you can have a gift on your life but that gift still needs the blessing of a father i pray god you are able to understand it if not seek the lord you'll get understanding okay so we see now we are entering today's topic now okay so we are in chapter 3 verse 3 now naomi looks at her daughter and says listen i shall i not seek security because now she sees after giving her instruction how she behaves after telling her because she knows her heart is with the young men she wants to go there because that that thing is still there but the instruction comes don't go there go there and now we see that the whole harvest she was with obeying and sitting with the young women just listening to instruction the mother gets up and says listen now i am going to seek a husband for you hallelujah can you shout amen when you obey god's instructions god will seek a spouse for you god will seek a house for you god will seek a job for you god will bless you god will seek that healing in your life that healing in that relationship when you begin to follow instruction so now she gets up now look in verse 3 now she gives specific instructions okay now remember this i hope you're very attentive now okay we are getting into something now which is very very important so in verse 3 now naomi gets up and says listen this is where a voice of god is so important to you so she gets up and says now root wash yourself anoint yourself put your best garment go down to the threshing floor but do not make yourself known to the man until he's finished eating and drinking so she's talking about boaz okay then it shall be when he lies down that you shall notice the place where he lies you shall go in and cover his feet and lie down and he will tell you what to do can you imagine this lady is so sharp she even knows how boaz is going to respond and this is where the voice of god is so critical to you because there are some things you will never figure out it will take only the voice that god has sent you to lead you into that place i am telling you you can keep trying you will see it and never know it these are places that god will allow you to move in when you are able to obey and honor and respect the voice that god has sent you many people confuse this they say you are worshiping a man no they are not worshiping a man there's a difference between worshiping god and honoring the man and woman of god whom god has sent god has sent to bless you amen that's what we do we honor and respect we honor with substance we respect we bless the voice that god has sent us we don't worship it we worship only jesus but we definitely know the voice that god has sent us and so now this voice begins to give her instructions and there's a lot of spiritual significance to this so somebody who is outside the covenant is she's giving instructions how now is going to bring her inside the covenant so only a a man or a woman who has walked with the lord will be able to do this this is the importance of spiritual covering so now she tells her first wash yourself and anoint yourself <laughs> i can take this so many places <laughs> but let me just tell you your spiritual parents just don't see your spiritual condition they see your physical being also they know you need when you need to anoint yourself and you need to wash yourself amen before going to get into the right place but let me talk only about the spiritual things today okay <laughs> Therefore wash yourself. You know the book of uh let's go to Joel Joel chapter let me just pull it up here. Hallelujah. How many of you are being blessed by today's word? I'm telling you the word is coming to many of you right now. It's coming in different dimensions to some people based on where you are. But look at Joel chapter 2. verse 
Yet even now declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting and weeping, with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your garments. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, and he relents over disaster. Amen. I also want to give you another one. Let's go to James chapter 4. And over here, James chapter 4 verse 8. He says, Draw near to God and He will draw near to you. Cleanse your hands, you sinners, and purify your hearts, you double-minded. So He's telling you, just as Naomi is telling her, wash yourself, and we know when it comes to wash yourself, again, this is the spiritual side I'm giving you. So Naomi is giving instructions to a Ruth who's outside a covenant, how to get into, and this is basically talking to you about salvation. He's telling Ruth the secret of how she gets into the genealogy, how she becomes a child of God, how she gets into the genealogy, of our loving Jesus. Amen. So she says, first, anoint, go wash yourself, meaning cleanse your heart. The Bible tells you in, I think, Hebrews chapter 2 also. Therefore, now let us come, he says, let us come in full, in full assurance of faith, having cleansed our bodies, having cleansed, having cleansed our bodies with pure water to cleanse us from a guilty conscience and having sprinkled our hearts with water, I believe to cleanse us from a guilty conscience. So, you know, let us come washing ourselves with the word, anointing ourselves with the Holy Spirit, anointing ourselves and the best garment to go down to the threshing floor. So make sure that whatever things you have been doing, you know, it's basically telling you that when you're coming to move into this, in, you know, and this is talking about our life before we came to the Lord, how we repented, it's more of the attitude of the heart. You know, repent, wash yourself, get rid of the stuff that you are doing. Anoint yourself means, anoint yourself means decide once and for all from your life that, you know, you've had enough of this life, that you want something different. And then wear your best garment, put on your best garment to go before your king. And these are not physical garments, okay? These are spiritual garments. So throw out the filthy garments that you were wearing before. And wear the best garment. You know the best garment that you can ever wear when you come before Jesus? is the garment of humility. And this is basically the garment that Naomi is telling Ruth to wear. Because look at the instruction. Do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. You know what that means? Wait on the Lord. Wait. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings of eagles. They shall run and not be faint. So, so, so she's basically telling Ruth, don't go there to impress Boaz with your great clothes, your perfume and everything. Spiritually, it means that get rid out of the rubbish the dirt, wash yourselves, put clean clothes, means put on an attitude of humility, put on that best robe of humility, humble yourselves under God and you will be exalted. And then she gives an important instruction. So one is cleanse your hearts, repent, come with humility, that is, you know, a putting on a new garment. And then it says, wait on the Lord, wait, wait. Don't be in a hurry to rush. Don't be in a hurry. God, I made a prayer today. If you don't save me, I'm going to die tomorrow. No, <laughs> I want it today. If you don't give me today, I, you know, I'm going to go and do this. These are not kind of prayers we should be making. If I don't get this, I got plan B already. No, no, no. This is where you're tempting and testing God. This is not a heart of humility. This is not a heart of waiting on God. This is a heart of pressure. I'm putting pressure on God and God never gets pressured. <laughs> Amen. God is not a guy who is going to get, oh my God, she's given me two options. If I don't answer, she's going to do the wrong thing. No, God will allow you to do the wrong thing. And it will not be because God wanted it. It's because you in your heart chose it. I hope you are understanding. These are very, very important. Sometimes we make stupid prayers like this and then we think God's silence is his approval. No, 
God actually thought that question you raised was stupid, so He didn't answer it. But you should have thought, okay, if He didn't answer, I'll wait. But we decided, and if He, if there's no answer, I'm going to go. <laughs> no, 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 no. I hope it's for someone. It's blessing you, Amen. So then He says, okay, listen. In verse four, then it shall be when He lies down, you shall notice the place. Notice the place where He lies, and you shall go in. There are certain places. As you keep praying in, as you keep worshiping the Lord, as you keep crying out, that place, she says, go there. When you discover that he, you have found him over there, go in, uncover his feet, lie down, and he will tell you what you should do. So Naomi is so confident in the instruction. She's saying, listen, if you do this, find him. He'll eat. He'll be satisfied. He'll be waiting. When that time comes, go there. Don't wake him up. Just uncover his feet and lie down, and he'll tell you what to do. Wow, what a prophetic instruction! And look at Ruth's response. She said to her, "All that you say to me, I'll do." Can you imagine Ruth? She's totally out of the covenant. She doesn't know how this works. She's come from a Moabite world where you have to, you know, offer children and offer. Pagan sacrifice, do blood sacrifice, and everything. And now, Naomi is letting her into a secret how to connect with a deep dimension of the presence of God. What did I tell you? Rend your hearts, not your garments. Repent. Get rid of all that rubbish that was on you. To repent, true repentance. Anoint yourself. Anoint yourself with humility. So many people. I'm telling you, there's one thing God hates. You will never get a breakthrough if you're proud, and pride is in the heart, because God knows it. He says that the proud He knows from a distance. God rebukes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. That's a scripture in your Bible. Gives grace. This is all about grace. Naomi is teaching Ruth how she's going to get into a covenant through grace, not through a performance, not through all that she did, not through her herit, you know, her, her, you know, her, what she inherited, not from what class she's come, not from what community, not how much she owns. She's saying you're going to get everything through grace, and she's showing her the method, and she says, "Go and wait." Uncover his feet and lie down. Uncover his feet and don't start talking. Just uncover his feet and lie down. <laughs> How many of you can just shout right now and say, "At the feet of Jesus, all your needs are met." At the feet of Jesus, all your needs are met. And then Naomi, I just love Ruth's response in verse five. All that you said, I'll do. So many of us have a problem with these instructions. Pastor, we've done everything. Really, have you done? Because according to this, if you've done it, you're going to see the reaction. Let's study it. So she went down to the threshing floor, did according to all her mother-in-laws instructed her. Now, it tells you Boaz came, he ate, he drank, he lied down. Verse eight. Now it happened at midnight that the man was startled. Okay, so now Ruth has done this. Startled, turned himself, and there was a woman lying at his feet. And he said, "Who are you?" Now remember, Boaz already knows. Remember, we told you the spiritual side. God already knows who you are. He still bothers to ask, "Who are you? Who are you?" That you paid instruction to all that you, that the voice of God told you. Say thank God, thank God, thank God. It's not like, who are you? It's like, wow, who are you? You finally learn to listen. It's not like, who are you? It's like, wow, who are you? That you listen to every detail and you finally came here. And she says, I am Ruth, your maid servant. Take your servant under your wing now. What do you think? This is very important. She says, "I am Ruth, your maid servant. Take your maid servant under your wing, for you are a close relative." That close relative is, you know, translated as Goel, kinsman redeemer. Okay. Do you know what 
Naomi let Ruth into. She let Ruth into a deep secret. Ruth was serving, was walking, but she didn't know that there was a secret in this word of God. That's what the voice of God does. Reveals to you things that you don't know in advance so that you can get into places you would have never ever got. So I want to show you this. You look at you. So basically what did Naomi do? She showed Ruth a way by if you follow the way you being a heathen you being because remember Naomi is already an Israelite she's in covenant but now Naomi is showing Ruth a Moabitess who's out of covenant a secret that she would have never discovered on her own and that secret Ruth would have never found out so Naomi teaches it to her and says if you do this you being a Moabitess who could never be part of Israel will now have access to come into the commonwealth and the blessing of the Lord Jesus. I want you to see this in Deuteronomy 23. I want you to see this Deuteronomy and I just keep this in your mind, okay? Because I'll explain it later. Deuteronomy 23:3. An Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter the assembly of the Lord even to the 10th generation none of his descendants shall enter the assembly of god and the reason this was put was because of what the moabites did they tried to make the israelites sin hired balaam to prophesy and bring a curse and god was very upset so he spoke and said a moabite or ammonite cannot enter into the house of god so are you very clear it's written there you can never come but there is a way can you all sh- Shout amen. There is a way. Hallelujah that you can get into the house of God. But it's not going to come through uh doing it your way. So now Naomi lets in her lets her on a secret. So if you go to Jer- Deuteronomy 25 verse 5, Naomi tells her, "Listen. There is a concept called kinsman redeemer and I'm going to explain that to you. If you read verse 5, she says, "If brothers dwell together, and one of them dies and has no son the widow of the dead man shall not be married to a stranger outside the family her husband's brother shall go in to take her take her as his wife perform the duty of her husband's brother to her and it shall be that the first born son which she bears will succeed to the name of his dead brother that his name may not be blotted out of israel But if the man does not want to take his brother's wife then let his brother's wife go up to the gate of the elders and say my husband's brother refuses to raise up a name to his brother in Israel he will not perform the duty of my husband's brother then the elders of his city shall call him and speak to him but if he stands firm and says i do not want to take her then his brother's wife shall come to him in the presence of the elders remove his sandal from his foot spit in his face and answer and say so shall it be done to the man who will not build up his brother's house and his name shall be called in Israel the house of him who had his sandal removed amen so there is a law okay and this is basically what Naomi coached Ruth with she said listen this guy is one of our relatives he's a kinsman redeemer Now based on a law in our kingdom this law says that if you know you are married and your husband dies i mean your husband and you we know that uh, Malon was Ruth's husband and uh, Elimelech was Ruth, uh, Naomi's husband both died so she's telling Ruth listen if your husband dies there is a law because remember in Israel everything was connected to property people were connected to property and god did it that way so that if anybody died the close kinsman redeemer that means a close relative so say you got married your husband died the close relative the brother would come uh take this widow get married to her raise up seed for her so that the name would not go out of Israel would not be blotted why because now she has no husband so she'll never have any children so that's why the brother comes does the you know the work of what her husband 
what he needed to do and he died and did not have any seed he raises up seed for his brother to perpetuate the name and the inheritance of his brother i hope you are able to see this god was so beautiful he wanted to make sure everyone had their property i pray god each one of our children will have their own properties amen <laughs> yes 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 because there's something great i want to explain it now because we're too much but listen to me so this was the law that the kingsman could redeem you and if he redeemed you not only did he redeem the property he would also get married to you and then the seed the first child that was born was actually would not be his would actually go towards raising up you know your dead your the husband that you lost his son it would go up to raising up that family name so that the inheritance would stay within the family i hope you understood that okay this is very critical so this instruction has been given by naomi and what root does is she goes she lies there boaz gets up suddenly in verse 9 and he says so she goes there he's sleeping she removes the cloth from his feet exposes his feet and she lies down boaz gets up in the morning suddenly with a start and he realizes this is root and root immediately tells him take me your maid servant under your wing for you are a close relative so she is telling him what he already knows he knows there's a law actually can i tell you boaz always knew that he was the redeemer now why did boaz not go out and tell ruth there's a beautiful mystery behind this do you know why naomi gave all these instructions to ruth because he re- she realized that root that boaz love root because remember he had already shown affection he brought her into communion told the angels to drop stuff for so he already knew but she realized that this root would never be able to know this how she could be a part of this covenant so there was a way where you can gain access and you can place uh place a uh, or constrain or place a demand on the grace that Boaz had there was a place but she just never knew it so Naomi teaches Ruth how to do it and that way is through the kingsman redeemer which i explained to you so Boaz knew about it and this is exactly which i want you to understand this great truth god loves everybody he loves everybody he knows those who are his but you need to go and place a demand you can't be sitting and just thinking oh great i you know i want to i want to come into this blessing but not do anything instructions naomi gives her instructions how to enter into that grace i hope you're getting it so if you look at it spiritually god loves everybody god this boaz love root he knew the pathway to get root into he sent naomi to give that instruction naomi gave it root obeyed it and now she comes to boaz and says take me under your covering take me under your wing you know wing what it is the everlasting wings of our lord jesus christ <laughs> hallelujah the eternal god is your refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms you know the wings of our lord it's it's all over your bible the wings so here is root saying listen i've done everything what my mother told me i've come here now take me under your wing it's so important you know i know children of god who love god but they don't follow the instruction there are so many people who say we love god we give them the gospel but you need to place a demand the minute you place a demand and we are going to go into some interesting things I hope you can bear with me. You will have to stay with me a little longer today, okay? Because I want to cover this because I cannot cover it on another day. So follow closely with me. So now here you are. She comes, she tells him. Now look at his response. Then he said, "Blessed are you of the Lord, my daughter, for you have shown more kindness at the end than at the beginning, in that you did not go after young men." You saw he brought this up again. So he's telling her you passed the test too. 
He's saying you have shown more kindness. You didn't go after young men, and this doesn't mean that you you have to go after old men. Okay, I'm just trying to tell you, just in case you read it wrong. It means that you pass the test. You did not go after young men, whether poor or rich. What he's basically saying is, Ruth, my dear child, you came into this land. You okay? Let's read eleven. And now, my daughter, do not fear. I will do for you all that you request. For all the people of my town know that you are a virtuous woman. Wow, virtuous woman, Proverbs thirty-one woman. Okay, so he's basically saying you could have come here, you could have gone and done things your way, you could have gone and searched around and found some Israeli guy and you know, gone and you know, young guy and gone and done things your way. No, no, no. But you didn't do all that. You waited. You served. You walked diligently. You continued to. So honor, respect, honor, and now you have passed the test that even your mother gave you, and that followed the instructions, and you've come here. So he's saying, you are so kind, you are so loving, you are a virtuous woman, you have done everything right. So remember, Jesus loves you. He sends voice men of God, women of God. He sends Naomi's. He sends people in your life to give you instructions to get into places that you cannot. But it is you who needs to follow that. When you follow that, now comes the response. I pray God that you will place a demand because remember the Kingsman Redeemer is waiting, but he did not strike the first conversation. He was waiting for Ruth to come and put a demand. Now Ruth didn't know how to do it, so God sent a Boaz. Remember. When Naomi told Ruth, she told her, "Do these things, uncover his feet, lie down. After that, he will tell you what to do." Ah, oh, I hope you're getting it. I hope you're getting it. There are places that you will enter when you do certain things, walk in certain diligence, that the instructions will be so clear that after that you will hear the voice, "Walk ye in this path," and you will be able to move into things that you have never moved into. So now look at Boaz. Okay, now comes his instruction. Stay this night. Now he tells her, "Listen, it's done. You pass the test. You've done the stuff. Now I'm going to tell you what to do. Stay here, and in the morning it shall be that if he will. Okay, now this is very very important. Okay, stay this night, and in the morning it shall be that if he will perform the duty. Oh, sorry, I didn't read verse twelve. So he tells her in eleven, "You're a virtuous woman." In verse twelve, this is very critical. Very, very mark it down. Now it is true that I am a close relative. However, there is a relative closer than I. So he's telling Ruth, "Listen, there is a small problem. Yes, I am a kinsman redeemer and a close relative, but there is someone closer than I." Okay. Now he's telling her, "There's a." Now he's telling her what to do. to get overcome this problem stay here he says in the morning and it shall be that i will perform the duty of a close relative for you good and it sorry and it shall be that if he will perform the duty of a close relative for you good let him do it but if he does not want to perform the duty for you then i will perform the duty for you as the lord lives lie down till morning so she lay at his feet until morning and she arose before one could recognize another then he said do not let it be known that the woman came to the threshing floor was 15 so i hope you understand this boaz is telling her listen i can do this but i want to let you know there's another relative closer there's another kingsman and he's closer than me so if he doesn't redeem you then i will definitely do it but we have to wait We have to wait and watch. This is the waiting period after you get inside. It's so important when the final word comes to you that you've been praying for. You need to wait, and not just wait and just twiddle your thumbs. Wait in expectation because now you've done everything that you could. And here, verse fifteen, he says, "Now bring your shawl that is on you. Hold it out, and then he measures his six ephahs of barley, lays it on her, and then." She went into the city. Now, sixteen. She came to her mother-in-law and said, "Is that you, my daughter?" When she came to her mother-in-law, she said, "Is that you, my daughter?" Then she told her all that the man had done for her, 
and she said these six fr's of bali he gave me for he said to me do not go empty handed to your mother in law oh i tell you there's so much in this book you know and it's we can just go on for one year on this i'm telling you it's so beautiful so you see boaz here he tells us everything then he tells her listen open your shawl i'm putting something in make sure you don't go back empty handed to your mother in law is something that boaz knows about naomi because he knows that ruth this is not the capacity of ruth so he says put down your shawl you whatever has brought you into this grace has not been the, this is where you need to understand that there's some grace on your life that has not been it could not have happened by you walking alone Oh I can only thank my father right now I don't know what to say I just thank him I thank him there's some things I would have never understood if God had not sent my spiritual father to me now it's so beautiful as I follow Jesus and worship him I see everything in my father's instructions are for good and not for evil He says don't go empty handed meaning what once you receive from the Lord go back and share it everything you receive share back with your teacher so she goes back and gives uh you know those six fr's of bali to her mother in law now look at her mother in law it's still not over this is where most people forget they think oh wow i got the partner forget everything it's still there it's it's going on and this is where many people think i've arrived no you've not you've just actually reached 100 feet but there's another 500 feet and because of your arrogant heart because of your 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 spirit that of pride that has come up you got stuck at 100 now for the next 20 years you thought you got what you wanted but you're stuck at 100 feet when you had to supposed to reach to 500 i pray you're able to read between the lines read in the spirit amen not between the lines now Look at Naomi. Naomi says, "My dear daughter, now look at this. Sit still, my daughter. Now is no more daughter-in-law. You can see there's no more daughter-in-law." She says, "Sit still, my daughter, until you know how the matter will turn out." Why? Because there are two kingsmen redeemers. For this man, for the man will not rest until he has concluded the matter till today. This is so critical. Once you have placed a demand on the Lord, once you've anointed yourself, washed yourself, put on new robes, come to the Lord, humbled yourself, waited on him, and now you have put up demand, you have come to the feet of Jesus and said, "God, no, 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 no I don't want anything. I want to be under you. I want your covering. I want your banner over me." Once you have done all this, now Ruth is uh, Naomi is telling her, "Listen, Now that he's done all this for you you have done everything you could now relax this is what happens when you have done and come to the feet of Jesus and you have received from him a word which is going to push you into your destiny push you into the next level now you can't do anything after that now you need to wait till the door is opened so she says listen now My sweetheart, my darling Ruth, you've done everything. Now relax. Because this man now, now it's on him. Now the Lord is going to fight your battles. Amen. He is going to fight your battles until he brings you into the place where you need to be. Can you shout amen? I hope you're seeing the trajectory. It's so beautiful. So beautiful. Now Boaz, okay? Now Boaz went up Now, this is chapter 4 I'm reading and I'm going to end here okay but I have to say this because if I don't say it you'll miss everything now boaz went up to the gate and sat down there and behold the close relative whom boaz had spoken came remember he there's another relative who's close so he goes to the gate and remember the gate is the place where the council is okay it's not the gate like you think my gate uh, you know my building gate no it is the place where decisions were taken where judgments were passed where resolutions were made so he goes to the gate sits down and behold the close relative whom boaz had spoken about comes now boaz says come here my friend sit down here so he comes and sits immediately verse to boaz goes he gets 10 men of the elders of city and said sit down here so they all sit so now you have the closest redeemer kingsman redeemer for ruth 
is there boaz is there and 10 men of the city are there so this is literally what is happening in heaven okay you have the city of you have the 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 24 elders you have the the person sitting on the throne and now a resolution is going to be passed then he said to the close relative naomi who has come back from the country of moab sold the piece of land which belonged to our brother elimelech so now he is telling and i thought you informed and i thought to inform you saying buy it back in the presence of the inhabitants of the elders of my people so he's telling him listen naomi came back and she sold the piece of land because of the extreme poverty i told you so land was connected to people and then he's telling him now buy it back in the presence of the people if you will redeem it redeem it but if you will not redeem it then tell me that i may know for there is no one but you to redeem it and i am next after you and he said i will redeem it then boaz said now boaz tell him there's one small problem on the day you buy the field from the hand of naomi you must also buy from root you must also buy it from the root from root the moabites the wife of the dead to perpetuate the name of the dead through the inheritance and the close relative said i cannot redeem it for myself lest i ruin my own inheritance you redeem my right of redemption for yourself for i cannot redeem it so just like little explanation here for you so boaz says they, you need to redeem this property they sold it so that it stays within the family he gets up and says no problem i'm going to redeem it after he says this boaz says this is a small problem because when you buy that you will also have to redeem root the moabites because she is attached to that property the minute he hears that he says listen i cannot redeem this remember that law which i told you in deuteronomy 23 a moabites and an ammonite can never be in the congregation of the lord until the 10th generation did you read that so he knows very well this guy is already settled he is the closest redeemer he has to redeem he has no problem buying the property but he has a problem with the person attached to the property did you get it i hope you are able to see it so now he turns around and tells boaz listen i can't do it i am not going to jeopardize my inheritance my value my integrity my you know walking in holiness my standard because if i bring this property i have to bring this woman and she is a moabites and she, and he knows very well the commands of the lord that a uh, ammonite or moabite cannot enter the kingdom so now look at boaz so verse 7 now this was custom in the former times of in israel concerning redeeming and exchanging to confirm anything one man took off his sandal and gave it to the other and this was a confirmation now eight therefore the close relative said to boaz buy it yourself now the close relative tells boaz you buy it yourself so he took off his sandal and boaz said to the elders and all the people you are witnesses this day that i have bought from elimelex and all that was chilon and malon from the hand of naomi moreover root the moabites the widow of malon i have acquired as my wife to perpetuate the name of the dead through his inheritance that the name of the dead may not be cut off from among his brethren but and from his position at the gate you are witnesses this day hallelujah so now you see boaz finally getting up and saying listen now that you are not going to redeem i am going to redeem and he tells all the elders let it be written let it be written this is how when you got born again and you came into the genealogy of jesus it was written in the books of god that from today let it be all known to you who are present here that not only you but everything attached he is literally saying listen i am doing this so i am getting root into my covering This is what God did for us brother this is what God did for us and if you are wondering so i'm sure you must have been wondering the spiritual significance of all this right let me explain this is most glorious you must not miss this okay i'm ending oh lord so you have boaz 
you have the redeemer there's a closer redeemer than boaz and if you're wondering who's that let me tell you the spiritual significance this redeemer is no other than the law this is the law this boaz is jesus so now you know in verse 6 what the reli- what the close what the law says the law says i cannot redeem and do you know why it cannot redeem because the bible tells you that the law never justifies this redeemer that's why this redeemer doesn't have any name do you realize in the story because it's a law it's perfect it will always do what is written it is written that you cannot have a Moabite or an Ammonite in the house of God. Therefore, when he realized, I'll take the property, there's no problem. But when he realized that Ruth is connected to it, he says, I cannot redeem. I am not going to spoil my inheritance. It's written here in verse 6. I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I ruin my own inheritance. You know what it means? I am not going to ruin my own word. The law cannot be broken. The law cannot justify. The law, the Bible says in Romans 3.20, it says that the uh, no one will be justified by observing the law. Rather, through the law, we become conscious of sins. We become con- The law was given to make us conscious of sins. And he says, there is no difference for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God and are freely justified by his grace, by the grace, by God's grace, through the redemption that came through Jesus Christ. God presented him by faith in his blood as a sacrifice of atonement for all our sins. Can you shout amen? This redeemer who said, listen, I'll take the land, but I can't take this sinner. I can't take this sinner because this sinner cannot be a part of the righteousness of God. But now I want to show you the Kingsman redeemer. Now this is why Boaz could redeem Ruth. You know why? There's only one reason. The law never justifies. The law is a standard. The law will never let its own name go down. The law will never come down. You'll have to come up to it. But then there's another redeemer. What the law could not do, Jesus did. And the only reason he did it is because of this one word. He loved you. Yes, my child, he loved you. The reason why Boaz could redeem Ruth was because he loved her. Even though your sins are red as scarlet, even though there was a law in front of God, even though there was everything, there was his son who said, listen, father, I leave my inheritance. This is what Jesus did. He let go of his own inheritance. He let go of his own standard. He let go of everything. He became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God. Oh, I could speak on this for days. I hope you are able to understand that you and I were widows. We had no name. We had nothing. We had no genealogy. We were left as destitute. We would have died We would have been crushed, but here the law just put penalty after penalty showing us our worthlessness and showing us our condition that you are a widow, you are an adulterer, you are a sinner at heart. But here comes Jesus, puts away all his esteem, puts away all his inheritance, puts away everything. And this is why I want to tell you that following any 10 commandments is not going to save you because you'll never be able to do it. You need somebody who loves you. And Jesus is the one who loves you. That's why Boaz said in the presence of everyone, I have redeemed the property and I have redeemed Ruth and everything with Ruth. And that was only because of love. That's what the Bible says. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. So I hope you are able to see this. We'll talk about it on our next. I'm going to end, but on the next one, I need to go deeper into it. Because there's so much. And you see Boaz getting up and saying, listen, and this Boaz is none other than Jesus. Can you shout Amen right now? Can you scream Amen right now? That is you. That was me. Widows, destitutes, 
living from crumbs, walking around with begging bowls. You know, some of you, you've not understood. Your kinsman redeemer, you've not understood. Do you know the minute Boaz redeemed Ruth, her whole Moabite generation, every dirty tail that went with her, all her past, everything was wiped out. Now she was a wife of Boaz. Do you know that you are the bride of Christ? You are the wife of Jesus. Many of you are still making prayers like widows where you're begging God to do something. You have not yet learned to make a prayer of a wife. A wife knows who her husband is. A wife knows her husband's heart. A wife knows her inheritance. When you begin to understand your kinsman redeemer, your prayers will change. You will no longer make prayers of widows. You will know that the, your husband is God Almighty himself. And when you pray, you receive. Not because of your great knowledge. That's why the Bible tells you faith works by love. I pray that you're getting a revelation of love like you have never understood. That's why no matter how much you know of God, you still cannot operate in many things until you had a revelation of his love. I pray you're getting a revelation of his love right now. This amazing stuff from the time that Ruth came. So you see the whole process. It was a long process. But the minute she came and she uncovered his legs, placed value and said, listen, I, I don't care about my past, my, my denomination, my culture, which tradition I'm born in. I want you as my covering. The minute she placed that demand, Boaz went to work. Jesus will go on to work for you to make sure that he makes you his wife. And forever and ever, the failures that bad name, that shame, that black sheep, that black everything that followed you will be broken and wiped off in the mighty name of Jesus. Oh, I'm telling you, when I got this revelation, I started jumping. Man of God, I want to tell you, you may think you're a man. You're not. You're not the man. There's only one man. That's Jesus. You better learn. If you want your wives to be subject to you, better learn to be a good wife to your kinsman, redeemer, that's Jesus. I'm telling you, there's so much I can share. Do you know, through this revelation, I have understood now the number one reason why families break, even Christian families, it's because you have not received a revelation of love. Because wives and hear this very carefully this is a great revelation wives only respond to the love they have received remember a wife is a receiver okay she, you can give her input she will press shake down and give you back that's why many christians are not growing because they've not received love they've received instruction they received information but they have not received love they have not gone to the place where they put value on that and they stand and receive once you receive love i'm telling you you will start growing in areas you have never grown the information that you had will become revelation and you will be able to move into dimensions you've never understood why because now you know you're receiving love and so you can give love that's why the Bible tells you husbands love wives. It never tells you wives love husbands because until Jesus loves you in a way that you've never been loved, you will never be able to do what he's told you to do. But I pray God today you will understand that you need to grow in the love of God. And how do you grow? By his word, by understanding the details, understanding the glory, understanding the inheritance that he's given you. Not by sitting and saying, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. You don't know what you have. That's why Philemon says that the, your faith may become effectual by the acknowledgement of every good and perfect thing that is in Christ Jesus. It's already there. It's already in your husband. You just know how to tap into it and receive that revelation. And faith work it itself by love. So if faith is not working in your life today, 
this could be the reason you don't have a revelation of the love of god so i'm going to end here today but man what a beautiful word for so many people this is the amazing grace of our redeemer and you saw the perfect picture if you want to do additional study now you will understand romans 7 this is shows you perfectly two husbands and how you're married to one and how the next one needs to come you read i want you to do some homework listen until you do some homework go into details you will never understand the love of god amen it's not good enough to hear you need to get inside the word and it needs to come as a revelation to you so i bless you in the mighty name of jesus can you leave a note let me know how this word touched you spread it send it to your people who are struggling in areas to receive let them know that there's a kingsman redeemer who accepts you even though you are not supposed to be in the genealogy of Jesus god has made a way god has made a way so that you can be partakers of his glory i bless you in the mighty name of jesus amen